Or she has not washed the head. The head is smelling. When you go to church, even the person behind cannot sit there. He cannot breathe. He cannot breathe. Because of the hair. But people are managing with madness. I know one husband, he went up, the wife got up one afternoon and took the children and threw them out of the window. She, was, she went mad. She was mad. She went, she threw the window uh, out of the to, uh, top floor. She was uh, upstairs, threw the children out, uh, three of them. Yeah, she was completely bonkers. And he has been married for some time. This was just, I mean, a, a, a kind of one picking action. But all through, there were things, this, this. But she, when he threw the children, I realized that she's not well. And people are staying in such marriages. Yours is just the hair that is smelling. You can buy deodorant or you can buy every freshness, spray it in the house. What is the problem? <laughs> yeah, you see, you wouldn't know the person is mad till the day that she opened the windows and threw the children out. Yes, yes, it's just terrible. And yes, that, that you see, that's how mental illness is. Then you see that oh. So this quarrel we had yesterday, the quarrel we had last week, the quarrel, it's all the sickness. Because bad behavior and mental illness are brothers. They are, they are brothers and sisters, bad behavior and unhappiness. Oh, they are very related. It's on the borderline. So whatever problem God has allowed you to have, you must give glory to God. Amen. You know, Paul said in 2 Corinthians, he said, I take pleasure in distresses, in persecutions, in tribulations, in difficulties. 2 Corinthians 12, I believe. Mr. Man is not going to find this thing now. It's a problem, you see. <laughs> All right. So anyway, Paul said, I take pleasure in distresses, in persecution, in difficulty, for Christ's sake. For when I'm weak, I'm strong. So we must go forth from this place. Whatever the problem is, right you must know that god is going to use you to do a great thing and he's going to use you to solve a great problem yes if you see me standing here you are looking at somebody who has has had and has many problems which i'm trying to solve all the time. Yes. I'm, I am a, almost like a problem blender. Trying to blend problems and mash them and dissolve them. Make a smoothie and drink it. Yes. Yeah. You, you wouldn't know. When you are experienced. You see, it's like a building. When you have no experience, you see a building. So, oh, you have money, that's why you build. Or you see somebody prosper. So, oh, you have money, you are lucky. That's why you, 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 you've done this. But when you are experienced, you know that it's not money. Africa has had a lot of money. They've thrown money at us big time. Big time. You can't do no NATO. You can't do no NATO. It's not about the money. It's about something else. Yeah. It's about something else. Riches 
are there. Plenty. Oil, diamonds, this, that, that. It's not about that. But when you are not experienced, you just think that, oh, you're lucky with this. That's why this is working for you. But after some time, you realize that, no, there's difficulty and they're solving the problem. So today, God is telling us, God is going to use you to solve great problems. To, for, for, for us to have crusade, you can't imagine the problems, the financial difficulties. They are real things. But God is saying, do not mention problems. You are mentioning, you are mentioning, the, this, you are dis- giving the job description. I sent you because of problems. Amen. Amen. So you must go forth from this place with great faith that God will use you to solve the problem. Now, look at Zechariah chapter 4, all right? And you see right there, he says, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Sit down for one minute. I'm going to give you some homework, and I hope you do it, all of you here. All right. How many have read, and this is going to help you. You see, the, the magic here is that it is not by might. It is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. How many of you have read a Tintin comic before? Tintin. Tintin. Lift your right hand if you have read Tintin. Tintin. How many have never read Tintin before? Oh, please lift your hand. I I just need you to see. Never read a Tintin book before. Tintin. T-I-N-T-I-N. You never read Tintin, Snowy, Captain Haddock, those guys. You've never read it before. Okay. Now listen. Shh. Tintin had a dog called Snowy. There was a captain called Captain Haddock. And then you've not read it before. Okay, then this one you probably will not have. As- how about Asterix? How many have read Asterix and Obelix? Raise your hand, please. I need you to raise your hand. Okay, most of you have not read. Okay, so get one, Asterix and Obelix. There's this, that's what I want you to read. I'm giving you homework. Asterix. By, by, get one, you get it easily. All right? And read it, you know, read it. There's plenty of them, but they are nice stories. Now, in this Asterix and Obelix, what it is, is Asterix are like the gods, the Gauls. And the Gauls are today the French. And they were fighting the Romans. The Romans was Julius Caesar. All right? And it's, all the stories are about that. It's funny. It's nice. It's interesting. It's good. All the children, I know all the children are going to get and read it. It's good. Open your mind. Now, the secret of Asterix. Asterix was a short guy. He had something we called a magic potion. And every time he drank the magic potion, he became very strong. And Obelix was a big guy, but he fell into the magic potion when he was a child. So he was permanently strong. (laughs) But Asterix had this magic potion that he was given by the druid. Whatever, who was that girl? Magic man there. So he had it. And if there was a problem, he would take a thing, a a shot. And then he becomes very strong. He can beat the whole Roman army. Yeah, it's just comic characters. But that magic potion always reminds me of the anointing. Like there is a a magical liquid potion that when you take, you become superhuman. And that magic potion is the anointing. So that's why I want you to go and read the asterisk because it will help you to understand the anointing better. All right, that it's like when he took it, although he was very short, he could beat all the Roman soldiers. He could beat the whole battalion. (laughs) Now, what did he say about the mountain? He said, it's not going to be by might. It's not going to be by your 
personal strength or by your own power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Then in verse 6, then in verse 6, after telling him the secret, then he says, then the next verse, sorry, verse, who are you, great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, who has drank my anointing, right, you will be flattened. So I want you to go forth with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and walk in the anointing. And God is going to use you mightily to solve impossible problems. Move great mountains. Do great things for God. Attempt great things for Jesus. And move the unmovable. You will learn how to speak languages by the Spirit's anointing. You can travel by the anointing. You will solve the financial problems by the anointing. You will solve the problem of your color by the anointing. Yeah. You know, look at me today. I, I write books. All over the world, people read my books in different languages. Somebody like me. And I'm not an American. I'm not American. No publisher ever took my book. Because you see, to be a, a, a worldwide author, a best-selling author, a worldwide author, you need a publisher to say, ah, this is a good book. I'm going to publish your book. Till today, nobody. And they pay for it. Nobody. But I have over 20 million books published. Over 20 million books. Physical books. Not even the, not the ones I don't know. The ones that they, they're pirating. The ones that people are printing by themselves. The e-books. All the ones they are stealing. Everything. I don't know about it. The ones they are sharing. Yeah. That's a lot of books. Yeah. From any few American authors have, have even published 5,000 books. If you publish 10,000 books, you are a bestseller. Yeah. If you publish 10,000 books, you are a bestseller. Nobody will buy 10,000 of your books. <laughs> 10,000 people. Yeah. They, 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 they take authors. And they write before the book is written. I know because I know an author like that. I know an author who did it. He said they give you a contract for a bestseller. So before the book has come out, they've written that it's a bestseller. The bestseller, is the, and they write it. They, they pay and they write, these are the bestsellers. It doesn't even, nobody has bought one. And sometimes they go and buy it themselves. So that a lot of, it looks like a lot of people have bought it. They can buy 100,000. So that it's like, this is a magical book that people are buying all over the world. All are fake things. But what, that is a big mountain before someone who's written a book. Very big. Very big. But, oh mountain, oh problem, by the spirit of God, this impossible thing it should be solved. Amen. Yes. It should be solved. You know, if you live in Africa, there are so many things you see. Many difficulties which you don't have. In, of course, here too, you have so many difficulties you don't have in Africa. So it, th- there's no point in us all listing our problems. <laughs> True. Things that don't work here would work in Africa. And things that don't work in Africa would work here. Yeah. Yeah. So, brothers and sisters, I want you to know, okay, that God is sending us, in Australia, there are Australian problems. Yes. Special ones. Hey. You don't have those problems? In other, one of the problems you have here, pride. People are proud. Yes. People are proud. You talk to people, oh, I want you, 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 Come on, man. Yeah. You have.
have the movement of evil, things that will not run in Africa. Even the government will come out against and say, we don't accept this in our culture. It's an abomination. But here, is the abomination is what is taught to children. And the same people are against children being abused. And I can't think of any greater abuse than to mislead children to think that a boy is a girl. I can't think of anything more offensive and more evil to tell a 10-year-old child. I know somebody who told in school in 10 year, 10 year old that they were, they were, bo- they were, the boy was a girl. And the girl was a boy. Is it? Yeah. Have a right. Yeah. 10 years. I, I thank God my parents didn't tell me when I was 10 years old something like that. But you see, it wouldn't work in certain places. So you got your own problems and it's different. Everything is different. Don't bother to come with your list. We can't, we, I, can't, I can't be holy, Pastor, because, you know, I, I just keep falling in love. I just keep falling. I just keep falling. I, kept, I keep falling into the arms of one man after the other. Arms. Are you an arms dealer? Are you an arms dealer? (laughs) Hallelujah. How many are going to go forth with the anointing? Now, how do you catch the anointing? Keep listening to messages. Now, look at, look at, let's say, our children over there, and, and then many of us here, you see that there is a different spirit in the people. It's because when you hear the word, it affects you. It affects you. In Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 1, it says, And he said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet. I want to speak to you. Then the spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. And set me on my feet. So the Holy Spirit enters you when you are spoken to. That's what happens. More than anything else, expose yourself more and pray whilst you are listening to the word of God. And repeat the things you are hearing. Keep repeating them because you hear. When you hear, it's like news. But then when you hear again, it goes a little deeper. And it goes a little Little deeper. Do you know how I caught the anointing? I caught the anointing by listening to the same messages that I liked. I listened to the same message I liked over and over until it sort of came part of me. Because when the word is in you, it's like the spirit is in you. Jesus said, John 6, 63, the, the words I'm speaking, the words, not the clothes I'm wearing, the words I'm speaking, they are spirits. They are alive. So when the word comes into you more, the spirit, more of the spirit comes into you. So one night I was in the hospital when I was uh, preparing to be a doctor. Just my last six months, eh? my last six months of school, like, no, okay, not six months, the, nine, the last nine months. It was in June, 1988. It was in the middle of the night. And I was listening to Kenneth Hagin. Nobody told me to catch the anointing, but I liked it. And also, I felt happier when I was listening to these messages and I was praying. I just always felt something new. So, and I keep on listening. I knew all his stories. I keep on listening. Maybe I'll hear a little more something. I don't know, but I was always listening. And one night, in the middle of the night, 3 a.m., June it was, ha, ah, the Holy Spirit fell on me about 3 a.m. in the night. Huh? I was on my knees like this. And the Holy Ghost came on me. And I felt something going into the upper part of my belly. I felt it go. Then I heard a voice. And the voice said, from today, you can teach. I was 25 years old. I was was only 25 years old. I was only 25 years old. Yeah. When that happened to me. Yes. From today, you can teach. 
And since then, supernaturally, you know, and look, I tell you, if you see me, you are seeing a miracle. Yeah. Especially, especially those of you from a completely different background. You are from Fiji. You are from Sierra Leone. Where will I meet a Sierra, Leone, a Sierra Leonean? My father went to school in Sierra Leone, but that's about it. Where will I meet this? Where will I meet? I mean, where would I see you? Where would I meet somebody from Tonga? Where would I meet somebody from Papua New Guinea? I mean, there, I don't know people from there. Do you know people from do you know people from Kumasi? You don't know anybody. You don't know NATO. <laughs> so it's this miracle. So right now, as you see me here, it's a manifestation of the anointing that that he gave to me when he said, when he said, from today, from today you can teach it's like it's happening like this is the fulfillment of that when it was in the night and he spoke to me from today you can teach from today you can teach from today you can teach amen, amen. and this is something that you must decide to walk in there are times you have to take camp meetings that you were not at and just soak it in but especially when you like it when you like it and when you like it you found it especially when you like it at the beginning you like it you found it don't forget when you like it you found it and keep soaking it in keep soaking it in keep so and remember that God is always having one thing for you to do you know why criticism doesn't work when you tell me all the things that are wrong with me I can't move you tell me you are like this, you are like this, you are like this, you are like this. All I can say is I'm sorry. That's, it. See, that's not how the Holy Spirit is. You are like this, you are like this, you are like this, you are like this. No. A lot will tell you this one thing. Wow. Then that one thing is expecting you to do it. Wow. So when you don't do it, someone said, I, I'm, I'm waiting for the Holy Spirit. I mean, I've been, I've been, I've been, and someone said, the last time I heard the Holy Spirit was the last time he told you something to do it. Until you obey, he's not going to hear from him again. Yeah. So I don't feel the spirit. Yeah, you don't feel the spirit. You feel, the last time you felt it was when he told you something to do. Now, in Revelation, the book of Revelation, chapter 10, the book of Revelation, are you with me? Yeah. Revelation, chapter 10. Mr. Man, Revelation, chapter 10, verse number 1. He said, I saw another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. A rainbow was in his face. How many would like to see an angel? You are seeing it. His face was like the sun. His feet were pillars of the fire. Verse 2. And he had in his hand a little book. Wow. Open. And he set his right foot on the sea and his left foot on the earth. All right? And he cried with a loud voice. Verse 8. Jump to verse 8. It just continues from verse 2 to 8. Then the voice I heard from heaven spoke to me and said, Go and take a little, the little book that is in the hand of the angel. Beautiful. Which is open. And the angel which is standing one foot in Melbourne, one foot in the sea. Hmm? Verse 9. Beautiful. And I went to the angel and I said, give me the little book. How many would like to talk to an angel one day? Yes. You will talk to angels. Yes. I and, 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 if, and you, start, you have to start practicing now. Because this is, this is the largest angel recorded ever. And this is what this big angel came to do. He just came to show him, take this book. Take these words. And he said, take it and eat it up. You, you see, eating a book is different from reading a book. I eat books. That's why I, you see me reading the same book over and over. And over. You may think that, oh, do I like eating the same food every day? It's not that I like eating the same food. If it's working, it works. I mean, there are some people who have to eat this today, tomorrow, this, tomorrow, this. Tomorrow. You think they're you're always in a restaurant. But there are people, I tell you, if it's working, it's working. You can give them the same thing every day. You know? And for me, if it's working, it's working. And he said, take the book. Eat it. Don't read it. Eat it. You see the books I've written, they are oily books. They are anointed books. 
There are people who are not in our church. They take the books and they read and they, they prosper. They increase. They have big churches. They do great things. Yes. I'm telling you how to catch anointings. Because there is a grace on my life. And you can partake of that grace. Philippians 1 verse 7. Philippians 1 verse 7. Mr. Man, Mr. Man, Mr. Man, Mr. Man. Mr. Man. He says, look at it, underline it. Philippians 1 verse 7 says, you are all the last life. You are all partakers of my grace. You are all partakers of my. So the grace that is on my life, you are partakers Amen. of that grace. It's true. It's true. Yes. I am partakers of graces of other people. I'm working in them fully. Yeah. I have no shame about it. You always hear me mentioning names. Yeah. You are shy of me. I'm not shy of people. Yeah. Not a problem to me. I'm not, I'm not shy of nobody. Why should I be shy of NATO? I'm not shy of NATO. You shy of NATO? It's working for me, man. Yeah. You are all partakers of my grace. Grace means like the things you don't, I don't deserve that God is giving me that I don't deserve. You are also going to enjoy some of the things that I don't deserve. Ida is a partaker of my grace. Wow. Yes. That's why you clap for her. It's just partaking of the grace. Yeah, she's just, just enjoying it. Yeah. Because, I mean, there are other singers, there are other people. She's partaking of my, the grace of God that God gave me to come to Australia, to go to America, to go here, to go here. To, she's, she's enjoying it. She's partaking of the grace. Yes. So when you are connected, you partake of the grace. Receive the grace upon your life in Jesus' name. Back to Revelation chapter 10 verse 9. Revelation chapter 10 verse 9. And he said, give me the little book. And he said, take it, eat it. It shall make your belly bitter, but in your mouth it shall be sweet. And verse 10. Verse 10. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and I ate it up. Wow. I did what? I ate it up. Lombre sandar malo shabalai. Hmm. And it was in my mouth, sweet as honey. Huh? It was in my mouth, sweet as honey. So when you start taking in the word and it's sweet, nice. When you, when you see, you see like you come to camp meeting, you are like, you know, there is no even lower Christian message I've given you since I came here. These are high Christian messages about sacrificing your life but you are enjoying it you get what i'm trying to say yeah because it's not by force to be here it's not by force there's no nobody's forced to be here i'm not talking about riches money i mean not a career counseling i'm not talking about marriage i'm not talking about happiness i'm not talking about how to build a house how to be debt free how to be a millionaire none of those things these are high level messages but you see it's still nice to you you are enjoying it That's why we say, honey, honey, I love you. Honey, I need you. The, your word is to me like honey. So you must always watch out for the honey. Yeah, because then you see that God is pulling you. Honey. Yeah. But you see, when you, when you, when you follow the word and it stays longer in you, there's some bitterness in it. Yes. The word is not all just sweet if you stay long enough you will see yeah all right now verse 11 look at it look at it and he said to me you must now profess after eating the book after eating the book you must now profess 
You must prophesy where? To before many people. You see, now look at what is happening. I am prophesying before many people. Yeah. In the year 2000, 18 years ago, I was in a stadium in Colombia. I saw one of the largest crowds I've ever seen at the time. At the time. I preached in Seoul World Cup Stadium. Yes. I preached in Barranquilla Stadium. I preached in Monrovia Stadium. I preached at the Independence. Independence Square is the second largest square after Tiananmen Square. It's the second largest square in the world. Yeah. I preached there. Yeah. You must prophesy to people, a lot of people, many people. But I used to have always just a little group like this, but I believed the prophecy. And gradually, I started to see more people. And then nations. Yeah. Countries. That's why I keep on, you know, we've got to go to the nations, to the island. Every, every city, every island, every city. You think we are joking. Maybe you are joking. I'm not joking. It's not joking.